ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله who can be better than a person who calls towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen was salat was salam ala Sayyidil Mursali wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een chapter number 11 from the book essence and classification of hadith and we are talking about weak traditions al-ahadith al-da'ifa every hadith that does not fulfill the essential condition conditions of Hassan hadith is called a weak or daif hadith you might remember that there are four conditions for a hadith to be Hassan and if a hadith lacks any of these four conditions it becomes a weak daif hadith the weak hadith is also called Mardut rejected and it is unacceptable. It is غير مغبول. The hadith becomes weak because of uh, inter interruption in the chain or because of the integrity of the narrators being questioned or because of imperceptible defect or because of opposition of its narrators to the narrators who are more reliable than them. Now, the reason for the rejection of weak hadiths, uh, uh, there are four reasons for rejection of a uh, hadith of which the following three are important. The chain is broken, the integrity of narrator is questioned, the narrator differs with the narrations of more trustworthy narrators. Now, look at the chart on page number 163. 163. And uh, uh, here you see uh, the, uh, the how and why these ahadiths are rejected. So uh, the perceptible interruption and imperceptible interruption. A hadith is mu'allaq, mu'allaq, hanging means uh, the text is mentioned but the chain is not mentioned. So it becomes hanging. Interrupted mursal, you know we already read this when the name of a sahabi is omitted or eliminated then it becomes mursal and uh, perplexing is the hadith in which the name of tabi is omitted and munqate is a chain in which more than one narrators are uh, not mentioned and imperceptible interruption uh, there are two kinds mudallas and mursal khafi uh, a mudallas hadith uh, uh, is uh, a concealed one and the scholar of hadith finds that something is hidden and something is hided and mursal khafi means though Though uh, uh, it reached Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi but actually uh, something is hiding secretly. Now look at the example of Mu'allaq. Mu'allaq. Imam Bukhari uh, has written uh, the, the book Sahih al-Bukhari. And uh, the hadith غَطَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رُقْبَتَيْهِ حِينَ دَقَلَ أُسْمَانُ When Usman uh, came to Prophet Muhammad 
he covered his knees. So uh, this is the heading uh, made by by Imam Bukhari in chapter 112 Kitabu Salah. But but he uh, uh, has not given the the chain and uh, therefore this hadith is hanging or suspended mu'allaq now you must you might be surprised to find a hanging hadith which is a weak hadith in sahih bukhari but you should know that imam bukhari uses some hanging traditions as headings of chapters or sub chapters you have seen above the refs, reference of chapter 112, but you have not seen the hadith number. The above mentioned hadith is hanging at this place, but the same hadith has come in different words with complete chain at another place in Sahih Bukhari, hadith number 3659. Now, example of Mursal. Mursal. Imam Muslim says that he heard from Muhammad bin Rafi, who heard from Hussein, and who heard from Laith bin Saad, and who heard from Aqil, and who heard from Ibn Shahab Zuhri, and who heard from Saeed bin Musayyib, uh, uh, who narrated that Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Naha an bay il muzabana. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade to sell the fruit which is still on the tree. So this is a hadith of Sahih Muslim three nine five eight. Now in this hadith, this is a mursal hadith. The name of companion is not mentioned, and Sayyid bin Musayyib, who is a tabi'i is reporting directly from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Again, you must be surprised to know how an interrupted Mursal Hadith, uh, which is weak, is present in Sahih Muslim. Although this interrupted Hadith is found in this place, but its next is also found in Sahih Bukhari. The text is found in Sahih Bukhari with a complete chain of transmission in Hadith 2146 and Hadith number 3780. Now let's have the example of Hadith al Ma'adal. Ma'adal. For example, the Hadith of uh, Mu'atta Imam Malik. Lil Mamlu Kitaamuhu Wakiswatuhu Bil Maru Wala Yukalla Fumin al Amali Illa Ma Yutiq. The Hadith says, Feed and clothe you, your slave according to your capacity and do not make him work more than his capacity. So this is Hadith of Mu'atta Imam Malik, Hadith number 1806. In this Hadith, two narrators are omitted between Imam Malik, who was a Taba Tabi'i, and uh, Abu Huraira, radiallahu an, who was a companion of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, uh, who are those two? people missing in the chain. They are Muhammad bin Ajlan and his father Ajlan. And we came to know this from another Sahih Hadith uh, in uh, Mustadrak Abi Awana, Hadith number 4917. So uh, the Hadith in Muatta Imam Malik is Mu'adal but actually it is a sahih hadith uh, because the, the chain is found in Mustadrak Abi Awana. Now the example of Hadithul Munqati. 
If the chain of a hadith is not continuous, it is broken, it is called a broken hadith, munqate. If the name of a narrator is omitted or an ambiguous person is mentioned at some stage in the chain, the hadith will be called munqate. So the example is Imam Abdul Razak uh, Sanani uh, has reported from Nu'man bin Abi Shayba, who has reported from uh, Imam Thawri, who has reported from Abu Ishaq, and who has reported from Zaid bin uh, Yasha, who have reported from Hudayfa radiallahu an, elevatedly that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you give this post, to Umar radiallahu an, he is strong and honest. This hadith is mentioned in Mustadrak Hakim number 4685. In this hadith, a narrator by the name of Sharik is missing between Imam Thawri and Abu Ishaq. In other words, Imam Thawri did not hear this directly from Abu Ishaq. He rather heard it through Sharik. So this hadith is classified as Munqate. Now, the, the kinds of hadith according to the mode of transmission, according to the mode of transmission. When a narrator narrates a hadith from his teacher, and the teacher narrates from his teacher. The word by which he describes the chain are very important in the science of Hadith. Some narrators narrate with the word which shows their full confidence and some narrate with the words which consist of concealment. And concealment is called tadlis. So, uh, look at some of these special words of narrator. If the narrator says, Sami'atu, Sami'atu, I heard it myself. So, this is very clear, very strong, I heard it myself, Sami'atu. Or, Haddathana means the teacher narrated to us. He narrated to us, Haddathana. So very, very clear, very firm, and akhbarana. So he informed us. Qala means he said, my teacher said. But anfulanin, anfulanin, narrated by so and so. So there is a fear of concealment that the least in the word an. It is possible that the narrator might have heard it from the teacher himself or he might be narrating indirectly. Now, uh, you see again the, the hadith becomes mudallas or imperceptibly interrupted because of imperceptible interruption. To conceal the defect of the chain and conceal the correct information in order to beautify the appearance of hadith is known as tadlis and such a narration is called mudallas and the narrator is called mudallas in deceiving the narrator who is a deceiver who is a mudallas uses the word qala and an and he does not use the word sami'atu haddathani any any he d does not mention that i heard from him or we heard from him so now five basic kinds of tadlis the first kind is called tadlisul isnad concealing the chain the concealer reports from his teacher the hadith 
which he has not heard from him but he learned it from some other person in other words he changes the chain this is known as concealment in the chain and the second kind is called tadlis tasviya it is worse kind of concealing the reporter omits a weak narrator between two trustworthy narrators and joins the two trustworthy narrators with a probable word and tries to make the whole chain look trustworthy this is known as concealing in adjustment that the least that's who we are so it is very famous saying among the the muhaddisin the scholars of hadith that a hadith baqiyatin laysat naqiyya fakun minha taqiyya a hadith baqiyya laysat naqiyya fakun minha taqiyya so there was a narrator baqiyya bin al walid al kilai died in 197 hijri was a notorious concealer he was a mudallis that's why this phrase is coined about him the third kind of concealment is called tadlis shiq the narrator instead of using the famous name of his shaykh his teacher uses his unknown name by his kuniya in this chain and in this is called concealing the elders for example instead of saying abu bakr ibn abi daud sajistani he says uh, abdullah bin abi abdullah abdullah bin abi abdullah abdullah son of uh, abdullah so this is called tadlis shuyuk the fourth kind of tadlis is conjunctive concealing tadlis at when the narrator joins another name beside his sheikh in the chain it is called tadlis atf for example haddasna fulanun wa fulanu so instead of one he is mentioning two names now uh, the last kind is called tadli sukut sukut means silence in the terminology of signs of hadith concealing by pause is the concealing when the narrator pauses after saying sami'tu haddasana haddasani so he starts with saying sami'tu and then he stops and he uses some other words and then he stops then he quotes the actual hadith so here uh, he, the, the person who is listening may think otherwise so this is called tadli uh, sukut so uh, he stops for a while and then names the narrator so uh, this is called concealing by pause uh, uh, for example the hadith with an an uh, if the word an means on the authority of is used in the chain uh, of a hadith and listening from the narrator is not clearly mentioned it is known hadith with an an ana all the narrators with an are righteous person then with three conditions the hadith is accepted the narrator has met his teacher who has used the word an and the meeting of the narrator with his teacher is possible and the narrator is uh, not a mudallis in other other words he is not a kind of person who conceals the faults of his teacher imam bukhari puts another condition for the act 
acceptance of such ahadith that the meeting between the narrator and the teacher is established merely being contemporary of his shaykh is not enough according to Imam Bukhari. The word anna, anna is uh, similar to an. So this hadith is called mu'annan. A hadith with an, an, an is called an, ana, an, ana. Hadith mu'annan with ain, mu'annan. And hadith with anna, anna, anna is called mu'annan. So if the word anna is used in the chain of the hadith, and listening from the narrator is not mentioned explicitly, it is called mu'annan. Like haddasna fulanan, anna fulanan, anna fulanan. This hadith is also accepted uh, with the above three or four conditions. And uh, mursal khafi, a hadith becomes concealed or imperceptibly interrupted because of imperceptible pause. Imperceptibility interrupted is the narration in which the narrator reports a hadith from someone who is his contemporary and who has met him but he has not heard the particular hadith from him and uses word like qala it is called imperceptible interruption now uh, let's go to the page number 177 we talk about hadith musalsal musalsal so uni uniformly liked hadith if all the narrators in the chain of transmission of a hadith report the text of hadith with the same kind of reporting words or actions, it is called musalsal, uniformly like. For, for example, uh, all the narrators use the word haddasana or amarana, he ordered us. Uh, if the Prophet narrated a hadith holding his beard in his hand, all the narrators, including the companion, the tabi'i and the taba tabi, will repeat the, the words of hadith holding their beards in their hand. So, as there is continuity, as there is continuity in the words of action, of this hadith it is called musalsal because every narrator is imitating prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he, while narrating the hadith he is holding his beard so this is called musalsal in actions now let's talk about a hadith rejected because of defamation of narrator the tan is ma made on the narrator a hadith becomes mu'allal uh, or munkar or matruk or maudu because of uh, charges against the narrator let's talk about a mu'allal hadith defective hadith it is also called ma'lul. The hadith that has an imperceptible defect, uh, an invisible flaw, is called ma'lul, mu'allal. Although it may seem to be free from uh, it in appearance, it happens when the reason of defamation of a narrator is usually uh, illusion, vaham. The defective hadith is called uh, defected as well, ma'lul or mu'allal. Sometimes the defect injures both the text of the hadith as well as the chain of the hadith. And sometimes the defects injures only 
the chain of transmission and the text remains unaffected. Now, there are two conditions for a hadith to be mu'allal because it has a illa, illa. So number one, that the defect is invisible and subtle. Invisible and subtle. Number two, that the defect affects the authority of the hadith. The defective hadith is a rejected one. Uh, and the sound sahih hadith uh, is free from defect. So Imam Dar Qutni, the famous muhaddith, died in 385 Hijri. He wrote a book uh, by name Kitabul Ilal, in which uh, he explains the the illa, illa of different ahadis. Now, how do we know? Uh, the uh, that the hadith is mu'allal or ma'lul or defective number one collect all the chains of transmissions of that particular hadith number two then cross examine the differences of the narrators number three then compare the power of preservation and discipline of all the narrators number four then decide whether the hadith is defective or not. For example, for example, uh, the use of name Amr bin Dinar. Amr bin Dinar, uh, who died in 126, instead of Abdullah bin Dinar, is an illusion. Uh, it is the waham of the narrator. Abdullah bin Dinar is a different person. He died a year after him. So Amr bin Dinar is different from Abdullah bin Dinar. And the narrator sometimes uses wrong names. Now let's talk about Hadith Munkar. Munkar, Munkar is a denounced Hadith. Uh, it is called Munkar if some narrator in the chain makes blunders, blunders, major mistake. Number two, he's excessively negligent, he's careless. Number three, he's cons conspicuously sinful or a weak narrator opposes a comparatively stronger narrator. So the opposite of Munkar is Maruf Hadith. The Maruf Hadith is the one that has been reported by trustworthy narrators or the Hadith that does not oppose any Sahih Hadith. Now what is the difference between a Munkar and a Shaz Hadith? The Shaz which is irregular or rare hadith. The narrator of irregular hadith is reliable, but he opposes the narrator who is more reliable than him, while the narrator of a munkar hadith is actually weak. The opposite of denounced hadith, maruf hadith, uh, uh, the opposite of uh, shahs is called a mahfuz hadith. So munkar is opposite to maruf and uh, 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 shahs is opposite to mahfuz. Now uh, there is a hadith called matruk, a bandown hadith. This is also a weak hadith. If some narrator in the chain is blamed for falsehood. The hadith is known as matruk renounced. The hadith also becomes renounced if a narrator is a habitual liar in his conversation but this falsehood is not evident in the hadith or this particular narration is not reported by anyone else and is against the known principles or the narrator suffers from excessive illusion. His kasirul vaham. 
And lastly, hadith mawdu' Mawdu' We shall talk in detail in chapter number 12 on fabricated ahadith. A mawdu hadith is the one that is fabricated by the narrator himself and then attributed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam al ayyazu billah God forbid may Allah save us from spreading such traditions in the society and give us the ability to recognize them and avoid them the details are coming in chapter number 12 now rejected ahadith because of a difference with trustworthy narrators and uh, there are six kinds number one shaz hadith irregular one and interpolated uh, mudraj hadith and altered hadith musahaf and shaky hadith muttarab and maqloob uh, transposed or reversed hadith and al mazid fi muttasil lil asanid now let's talk about an irregular hadith hadith shazun hadithun shazun shaz and we read this uh, 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 in the beginning a sahih a sahih sound hadith is free from shazuz uh, if a hadith in which a trustworthy narrator opposes the hadith of a narrator who is more trustworthy he's asqa he's asqa than him uh, opposite to irregular hadith is mahfuz hadith now uh, look at this hadith man kana musalliyan fal yusalli qablaha arba'an wa ba'daha arba'an this is a hadith of kanzul ammal whosoever wants to pray before the friday prayer he may pray four raka, four units before the obligatory Friday prayer and four raka after it. Now, uh, Abiyad bin Aban uh, al Thaqafi is, a, is solitary in this hadith, while this hadith has been narrated in Sahih Muslim through different chains of transmission which does not mention four raka before the friday prayer as abiyad has opposed the reliable narrators his hadith has become shahs you see uh, the hadith of sahih muslim says man kana minkum musalliyan ba'd al jumu'ati fal yusalli arba so whoever wants to pray after the friday prayer he may pray for so the hadith of sahih muslim mentions only four raka after salatul juma whereas the hadith of kanzul ummal says for before and for after so the the hadith of kanzul ummal is considered as as shahs now uh, sometimes the shazus is in in the text and sometimes it is in the chain for example if ibn Uyayna, who died in 198 uh, reports from amr bin dinar died in 126 and uh, he reports from awsaja and uh, he reports from Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu an, the companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi This is the chain of a secured hadith. This is Mahfuz. Now uh, look at uh, the example of a chain which is Shaz. 
which is irregular. Uh, Hamad bin Ziyad is reporting from Amr bin Dinar and Amr bin Dinar from Ausaja and this chain is shas and insecure because the name of companion Abdullah bin Abbas does not exist here therefore this chain is not elevated but this is mawquf stopped although all the remaining narrators of the chain are seqa trustworthy so a shah's hadith is unacceptable it is a martud hadith and the sound sahih hadith are free from irregularities and shazus now let's talk about uh, mudraj hadith interpolated hadith if an addition is made in the chain or text of hadith beside the original chain or original text it is called a mudraj hadith it means that in certain insertion has been made in it insertion mudraj is inserted in other words, something has been added into it. So there are two kinds of mudraj ahadis. Uh, idraj is in the text or idraj is in the chain. So there are three kinds of idraj. Interpolation, uh, uh, it can be in the beginning or it can be in the middle or it can be at the end. The interpolation, idraj in the beginning of hadith is very rare. And interpolation in the middle of the hadith is very, very rare. And interpolation or idraj in the end of hadith is very frequent. Now let's talk about another kind of weak hadith which is called maqloob or reversed. If a word is changed with another word in the chain or the text, the hadith is known as maqloob, transposed. It can be both in the chain as well as in the text. For example, uh, if the narrator uh, changes the name, Instead of saying Ka'ab bin Murrah, he says Murra bin Ka'ab or uh, vice versa. So he makes the father as son or son as father. So that hadith is uh, inverted or transposed. The names, uh, uh, you know, are mixed up. Now the example of transposition Transposition in the text, iqlab fil matn, to say, la ta'lamu yaminuhu ma tunfiqu shimaluhu. La ta'lamu yaminuhu, his right hand will not know what his left hand has spent. So this clearly shows that he made a mistake here. And he transposed. Uh, he made a transposition he reversed the hadith because this hand does not spend only the right hand is the one with which you give so the right hadith is la ta'ala mushimaluhu the left hand is not aware what your right hand spent la ta'ala mushimaluhu ma tunfiqu Yaminuhu. So this is the example of transposition in the in the text. There is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari that seven persons will be under the shade of Allah's throne on the day of judgment. One of them will be a person who spends in the way of Allah so secretly that the left hand is not uh, the left hand does not know what his right hand has spent. So it is obvious that the right hand is used for spending. 
but an incautious narrator did not remember the hadith completely and he changed the right hand with the left and the left with the right. Similarly, to say instead of Amma wa khasa, he says khasa wa Amma. Yani, instead of general and particular, he says particular and general or otherwise. A hadith is uh, a weak hadith. Uh, one of the kinds is al mazidu fi muttasilil asanid. Additions in a continuous chain. Al mazidu fi muttasilil asanid. Addition of a narrator is an apparently continuous chain is called addition in a continuous chain. So example uh, is from the Mustadrak of Imam Hakim Rahimahullah, uh, the hadith number 4974, Haddasana Abdul Abdullah bin Mubarak, Haddasana Abdurrahman bin Zaid bin Jabir, Sami'atu Bishr bin Ubaidillah al Hadarmi, Sami'atu Aba Idris al Khawlani, Yakul. Sami'atu Wasila bin al-Asqa Sami'atu Aba Marsal al-Ghanavi Yaqul Sami'atu Rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Yaqul La tajlisu ala al-Quburi Wala tusallu ilayha So the hadith says Do not sit on the graves And do not pray facing towards them you know you have to face towards qibla you have to face towards qibla not towards grave so <clears throat> uh, so this hadith is reported uh, by the famous sahabi Abu, Abu mursad al ghanavi the addition of the name in this hadith of abu idris al khawlani in the chain of transmission is a vaham only uh, and it is the suspicion or vaham of Abdullah bin Mubarak. One kind of hadith is musahhaf, altered or corrected hadith. It is the hadith in which a scholar of hadith, a muhaddis, changes the words of trustworthy narrator literally or intellectually. In other words, the experts of hadith sometimes correct the mistakes of the scribe, sometimes change the dots and sometimes change the form of letters. The, uh, this is called uh, a musahhaf, altered or corrected hadith. There is one kind we already mentioned, uh, we repeat here, uh, hadith al mudtarab or muttarib, the forms of hadith that contradict each other and are conflicting with each other, and it is not po possible to adjust them together or give preference to any one of them, are called muttarib traditions. The chains of contradictory traditions are usually of the same level. Same level because the preference cannot be made. So look at the following two traditions. Both the traditions have the same chain of transmission, but the texts are contradictory to each other. Therefore, these two traditions are shaky, agitated, or muttarib. The hadith of Jami Tirmizi, hadith number 659, is a weak. So, Sharik bin Abi Hamza and Sha'bi and Fatima bin Qais qalat, Suila Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an his zakati faqal, inna fil mali lahaqqan siwa zakati. So, Sharik is narrating from Abu Hamza and he from Imam Sha'bi and he from Fatima bin to Qais, the, the Sahabiya, uh, the companion, and she says that uh, a question was asked 
uh, from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about zakat, and he said that uh, indeed there is right in the wealth besides zakat, and we find uh, the hadith in Ibn Majah with the same chain Sharik and Abi Hamza and Imam Shabi and Fatima bin Qais Suila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his zakat faqal laysa fil mali haqqun siwa zakati there is no right in the wealth except zakat so both of these ahadith are with the same chain but the text is uh, in contradiction so we call it muttarib let's talk about another term uh, sometimes the scholars of hadith uh, uh, use the word la asla lahu imam uh, muhammad nasiruddin albani uses this word many times la asla lahu sha means baseless there is no base to it la asla lahu the hadith which has no chain of transmission or none of its chains or transmission is acceptable is called la asla lahu it is a baseless hadith you must know some other miscellaneous terms in the signs of hadith and for example the chains uh, are called uh, Ali Sanad and Nazil Sanad. Ali and Nazil. A chain is called uh, uh, higher uh, and lower. So uh, in the Ali Sanad, the chain of narrators that reaches the uh, reaches Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi through comparatively fewer links. For example. The same text is narrated by two chains and one is narrated by a chain of Ruba'i with four, four narrators and one is narrated by Sulasi, three narrators. So the, the, the one with three members in the chain is called Ali. This is higher because it has very few names in the chain. Whereas this chain has more narrators, four narrators. So this is called a nasal one. So the, the higher chain has got superiority over the lower chain. The lower chain will get superiority over the higher chain when the narrator of lower chain are more more trustworthy, have greater understanding of religion and have a stronger memory than, than the narrators of higher chain. Now, sometimes the narrators are called majhul. Majhul means anonymous. This is also a term used by Hadith scholars. The narrator from whom only one person has narrated which has not been confirmed is called Majhul Arawi. It uh, is an unknown narrator whose person and character is not known. The person and personality is not known. Person is known but characteristics are not known whose righteousness and ability to memorize and preserve is not known. So that's how uh, he is named as Majhul or Anonymous. There's another word which is used about a Ravi, uh, Mastur, Mastur, invisible, screen. If two or more than two persons have narrated from a narrator, but it has not been confirmed, he will be called a Mastur Rawi. Now, Mubham is also a term of Hadith, Mubham, ambiguous. Mubham is a narration in which the name of narrator has not been mentioned. For example, a trustworthy person said 
So the name is not mentioned. A trustworthy person said. So that uh, narration will be called Mubham. And the Ravi can also be Mubham. Mubham Ravi, uh, the narrator whose name has not been mentioned, such a narration remains unacceptable until his name has not been clarified in another chain of transmission. For example, it is said in a hadith that an ambiguous person asked, is it essential to perform Hajj every year? So uh, it is confirmed by another hadith, the person who asked this question was uh, uh, Aqra bin Habis al-Tamimi radiallahu an the famous Sahabi of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He asked, uh, is it essential to perform Hajj every year? This question was raised by Hadra uh, Aqra bin Habis al-Tamimi. Now, let's talk about Bid'ah. Bid'ah means innovation. Remember, in the science of Hadith, Bid'ah is of two kinds. Number one, sinful innovation. It is the innovation which makes you a sinner. Number two, blasphemous innovation. It is the innovation which makes a person kafir or non-believer. So uh, uh, the bid'ah is called mufassiqa or kafira. It makes a person fasiq or it makes a person kafir. So a man becomes fasiq or sinful or a man becomes a non-believer. So uh, if the bid'ah or innovation is of a minor kind, he becomes a fasiq. If it is of a major kind, he becomes a kafir. And such uh, innovator in innovating uh, is called mubtadi'. The Ravi is called mubtadi. He is a narrator who belongs to the followers of innovation in the religion. Now let's talk about bid'atun mufassiqa. The tradition of a narrator who is guilty of sinful innovation is accepted with two conditions. Number one, the narration, the narrator does not invite towards his innovation. Number two, the narration does not narrate anything which help popularize his innovation. Now, the serious one, bid'atun mukaffira. The narration of a person who is involved in blasphemous innovation is not acceptable at all. Now, istishhad and mutaba'a. Istishhad and mutaba'a. Istishhad means pro providing evidence uh, to find a hadith which provides evidence. So a shahid, shahid is a hadith which has the same text as other traditions but the narrator and the companion from whom the hadith is narrated are different. So uh, try to understand this by an example. So the hadith of Nasai Iza ra'itumul hilala fasumu. When the moon of Ramadan is sighted, begin your fast. Wa iza ra'itumuhu fa'aftiru. And when the moon of Shawwal is sighted, end the fast. Fa in gumma alaykum fa'akimilu al iddata thalasin. And uh, if it is a cloudy day, then complete 30 days. This is Hadith of Sunan Nasai. Now, this has a shahid 
from Sahih al-Bukhari and reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. The previous hadith of Nasai was narrated by Abdullah bin Abbas. Now the shahid is from Sahih Bukhari. Abu Huraira says, Prophet sallallahu said, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi fa in ghubbi alaykum fa akmilu iddata sha'bana thalasim. Look at this hadith and compare between the text of both of these hadiths. The words are different but the meaning is same. Begin your fast of, uh, of Ramadan after sighting the moon and end it after sighting the moon of Shawwal and complete 30 days of Shaban if it is a cloudy day. The second hadith of Abu Huraira is called Shahid. It is Shahid of hadith of Imam Nasai. The words are different but the, their meaning are the same. So this is called uh, Isteshad. Isteshad. Now, <clears throat> there's another important one, uh, the term uh, Mutaba'a. Mutaba'a means follow up or pursuit. Mutaba'a means the hadith in which a narrator is joined by another narrator. It is possible that by finding the pursuing hadith, a tradition which is narrated by a weak narrator is strengthened by the other chain of transmission. It has two kinds. Number one, mutaba'a tamma and mutaba'a uh, mutaba'a qasira, tamma and qasira. So, for example, the hadith of Muslim Shafi'i, uh, Shafi'i, and Malik, Imam Malik, and Abdullah bin Dinar, and Abdullah bin Umar, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Al shahru tis'un wa ishroon, fala tasumu hatta taraul hilal." That. That Imam Shafi'i is reporting from Imam Malik and he's reporting from Abdullah bin Dina and he from Abdullah bin Umar, the companion, and he from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The month is uh, 29 days and do not uh, fast until you see the moon. So, the <coughs> whereas Imam Bukhari says, uh, an Abdullah bin Maslama al Qanabi, an Malik, an Abdullah bin Dinar, an Abdullah bin Omar. So uh, you have noticed that in the second hadith of Sahih Bukhari, the companion Ibn Omar, uh, the successor Abdullah bin Dima, Dinar, and the Taba Tabi Imam Malik, uh, it is the same chain of transmission follows the first hadith from the very beginning till end. So this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, similarity is tamma. Tamma means complete mutaba, complete follow-up. The same in a, uh, Imam Shafi'i and Imam Bukhari, both of them are uh, they are 100% same uh, in the chain. Whereas, look at the, uh, the, the next example of mutaba qasira, any deficient follow-up. You see, the, for example, uh, Imam Muslim reports, bin tariq abi Usama an Ubaidillah bin Umar, an Nafi, an Abdullah bin Umar, فَإِنْ غُمِّيَ عَلَيْكُمْ فَغْدِرُوا لَهُ سَلَاسِينَ Through Abu Usama from Ubaidillah bin Omar from Na'afi from Abdullah bin Omar radiallahu an uh, it is reported that complete 30 days if it is cloudy 
complete 30 days if it is cloudy, the month of Ramadan. So uh, now look at the same text in, in Sahih Ibn Quzayma, Hadith number 1909, Ibn Quzayma. Now this comes from Amin Tariq Asim bin Muhammad bin Zaid an Abihi an Abdullah bin Umar. Look at the two chains. Both of them are reported from Sahabi Abdullah bin Umar. But from Abdullah bin Umar, the, uh, the, the chain uh, is different. The first one is narrated by Nafe and his student and his student. And the second one is uh, reported by uh, Zaid uh, and uh, uh, from his son Muhammad bin Zaid and uh, from uh, he from Asim. So uh, here both of them are reported by Abdullah bin Omar but the chain are not in 100% follow up. The mutabi'a is not tamma. So such a kind of mutabi'a or called uh, mutabi'a qasira. Now the question is, uh, what is the difference between a shahid and mutabi'a? So in the beginning there was no difference uh, between uh, these two terms. But later on, the Muhaddisin made a clear distinction uh, between these two terms. Hence, the precaution should be taken now. If the witness, Shahid, uh, uh, or similar resembling the text is looked for, while the Mutaba common names are looked for in the chain of hadith in the in the shahid similar or resembling text is looked for while in the mutaba common names are looked for in the chain of transmission now uh, the famous books uh, on weak narrators imam bukhari and Imam Nasa'i and Imam Ibn Hibban, the famous scholars of Hadith, have written books about weak narrators. Following are the important books on this subject. Uh, Al-Kamil by Hafiz Ibn Adi, died in 365. Uh, Mizanul al by Shamsuddin Zahabi, uh, died in 748 Hijri and Lisan ul Mizan by Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani deceased in 852 Hijri. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalatu wassalam ala Sayyid al Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. The question whether we can accept a hadith about merits of deeds or can we be lenient or not. The hadith about fada'ilul amal, fada'il, virtues and merits of certain deeds. In our days, we have a group of people who are engaged in da'wah. They are called tablighi jama'at, tablighi jama'at. And uh, they have a book called Fada'il, Fada'il A'mal. And uh, this book has a lot of sahih ahadith, as well as certain weak ahadith, and as well as certain fabricated ahadith. So, uh, for a common man, um, this is, this is uh, uh, not 
a recommended book uh, because a common person cannot cannot distinguish between uh, between a sahih hadith and a hasan hadith and a daif hadith and uh, a, a maudu hadith as you know the term good hasan hadith did not exist in the beginning the hasan hadith was considered to be a weak hadith but its stated status was the highest among the weak traditions because it fulfilled all the conditions of a sound ahadith except one the only thing that lacked was that someone from its narrator had a weak memory these traditions were accepted in describing the merits of deeds in fadail amal it is attributed to three great scholars imam abdullah bin mubarak died in 181 hijri imam abdul rahman bin mahdi died in 198 Hijri and Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal who died in 241 Hijri that they all of them said when we narrate a hadith from unlawful and lawful from halal and haram we will be very strict but when we narrate a hadith about the merits of deeds we will be lenient and this is all reported by khatib baghdadi in his book al kifaya but the correct point of view is that it is not permissible it is not permissible to follow a weak hadith even in merits of deeds and by any means it is made permissible it will not be unconditionally permissible it will rather been restricted with certain limits the opinions of dr subhi saleh and dr yusuf al qardawi regarding this issue are given further on they uh, when they said when they said yajuzul amalu bil hadith ad-da'if fi fada'il al-a'mal when they say it is permissible to follow the weak hadith in the merits of deeds fi fada'il al-a'mal it must be remembered that the weak hadith does not mean the the hasan hadith according to present terminology here it rather means the hasan hadith according to present terminology which were considered weak but are comparatively less weak and more strong in addition to this condition there were three more other conditions that were imposed for accepting weak traditions in fadailul amal in merits of deeds number 1 the hadith should not be very weak Number two, the hadith should conform with the established principles of Quran and Sunnah. Number three, the hadith should not contradict any stronger evidence. Another condition that was added is that if a weak hadith is reported, its weakness should also be pointed out. For non-Arab readers and listeners. it is essential to describe the weakness and defect of hadith in explicit words in the other language all along with arabic if the terminolo- terminology of hadith is mentioned only in arabic there is danger of misunderstanding by the masses and consequently being misled they may take the hadith to be a sahih hadith they may consider it a sound hadith uh, dr subhi saleh 
uh, who wrote the famous book Ulum al Hadith does not consider that it is permissible to follow the weak traditions in the merits of deeds even with the three conditions mentioned above for their acceptability and his arguments are given below. Number one, Dr. Subhi Saleh says, we have such a large quantity of Sahih Ahadith and Hassan Ahadith that in their presence we do not need to use weak traditions at all. Number two, as the Da'if Ahadith are not solidly proved, our hearts and minds will always be suspicious whether it is the Sunnah of the Prophet or not. Number three, certainly and confident certainty and confidence are required in religious and the uh, certainty and confidence are required in religion and the religion cannot be based on presumption and suspicion. Number four, like the Islamic law, the merits have a basic importance in the religion and the religion cannot be based on a weak foundation. Now, look at the opinion of Dr. Yusuf Al-Qardawi, who is the faqih of our time on page number 187. The great jurist of Islam uh, and high-ranking leader of Islamic movement, Dr. Yusuf Al-Qardawi, adds two more conditions in his book, Thaqafatu Da'iyya. He says, the hadith uh, about the fada'il, about merits of deeds, should not consist of exaggerated and embarrassing description. And the weak hadith about the merits, about fadailul amal should not clash with a very sound hadith. And then he gives, uh, 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 for example, uh, the examples of certain scholars. He says it is not correct to attribute weak and frail traditions to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu with certainty. Sheikh Suyuti writes in Tadrib Sharha uh, Taqrib when you want to relate a weak tradition without its change, do not say that the Prophet said this. Don't say Qala Rasulullah. Likewise, do not use any form of certainty, but say it has been reported from him. Ruviya anhu kaza or balagna anhu kaza or it has reached us from him or it has been transmitted from him ja anhu or similar other sentences that have the probability instead of certainty in them the public speakers and preachers have made it their habit to relate even the weak traditions a Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in certain forms, and they say, "Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." This method is totally wrong, and it should be given up without delay. He further says, "It is pity that many people who are engaged in hadith do not care much for these principles while narrating the traditions." for persuasion and intimidation or other relevant topics. People accepted these things in the past, but in the present age, the attitude to test everything on the touchstone of reason has developed. Therefore, such exaggerated things are not acceptable to people, and they do not take them down their throats easily. Rather, it would be, it would not be astonishing if people became doubtful about the religion itself after listening to such baseless traditions 
and started questioning and criticizing it. Then uh, Dr. Yusuf al Qardawi uh, talks about Imam Munziri. Imam Munziri, he wrote the famous book uh, At Targhib wa Tarheeb, you know, uh, Abdul Azim Munziri, Hafiz Abdul Azim Munziri, uh, and who died in 656 Hijri. So, uh, Hafiz Munziri has said in Targhib wa Tarheeb, Although it has been reported by different ways, including a group of companions that uh, Abdurrahman bin Auf will enter the paradise. Abdurrahman bin Auf, the companion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, among the, the ten promised Jannah, that he will enter the paradise on his knees because of his excessive wealth in this world. But he also says none of its ways of reporting is free from criticism and none of these ways qualifies for the status of Hassan on its own. So if he was wealthy, his wealth was evidence of saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what a blessing is the righteous earned wealth for a righteous person. And this is the hadith of Musnad Ahmad. If the man is righteous and if his money is halal, what is wrong in having as long as he's paying zakat and as long as he earned from legal means? and as long as he is making charity. So the question is, why the state of, of this companion should be lowered in the next world because of his richness? What is the reason for having this attitude with this particular companion out of the whole Ummah? While we do not find any such thing with regard to any other rich person. However, one thing is established by some traditions that the poor people of this Ummah will enter paradise before the rich people. But this applies to all the rich people whether, without any exception. It is not correct to apply it to one particular person advising the missionary and the preacher to avoid the weak and fabricated traditions. Dr. Yusuf Al-Qardawi writes in his book, Thaqafatu Da'iyah, as it is necessary for the missionary and the preacher to stay away from the Jewish narratives and stories that have polluted the clear formation of tafsir with their poisonous material. It is necessary for them to stay away from weak and fabricated narratives as well. Because like the Jewish stories, these weak and fabricated traditions are also found in abundance in many books of Tafsir. Their narratives include the elevated marfu ahadis as well as the stopped mawkuf traditions. For example, the traditions that are attributed to Ali and Abdullah bin Abbas or the traditions that are attributed to the successors Tabi'in like Mujahid, Ikrima, Hassan Basri and Sayyid bin Jubair. Uh, other scholars like them who came after them. Yusuf al-Qardawi says, it is the method of Ibn Abi Hatim. Ibn Abi Hatim, the famous scholar, three, died in 327. And Ibn Marduya, who died in 410. And Ibn Jarir Tabari, to collect every kind of traditions, including Sahih, Hassan, Daif, and denounced in their tafsir. 
they have included the fabricated traditions as well. These traditions are sometimes elevated, marfu, and sometimes mawkuf, and sometimes they are maktu, severe, means they reach up to the tabi'i only, and sometimes they reach up to the sahabi only, and very few reach to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in the chain. Our opinion, we think that when the weak and fabricated traditions about the merits of deeds become common among the masses, they spoil their mind and their creed. The important things of Islam become unimportant and the unimportant things become important. Priorities have changed, like obligatory and essential acts get the status of voluntary acts, and voluntary acts get the status of obligatory and essential acts. Forbidden becomes disliked, and disliked becomes forbidden. Hence, it is not permissible to follow the weak traditions in merits of deeds and their publicity among the masses is not allowed. Now, we would like to talk about three basic sources of Islam and their correct order. We want to suggest every serious, sincere and moderate Muslim that he should always pursue the following correct order. Correct order while studying Islam. You are a student of Islam, so you must know the correct order. Now, there are reliable sources, reliable sources of Islam and unreliable sources. So, let's talk about the three reliable sources. Number one, the Holy Quran. Number two, Al-Ahadith As-Sahiha, the sound traditions. Whether they are Ahad or whether they are Mutawatir. Number three, Hasan Ahadith, sound Ahadith. These three have got the fundamental position in Islam. Quran, Sahih Ahadith and Hasan Ahadith. All the rest of the things will be judged in the light of these three basic things and according to the criteria fixed by these three things. Everything that clashes with these three basic things or not in conformity with their spirit will be rejected. What are they? Quran. Sahih Ahadith and Hasan Ahadith. This is the basic foundation uh, and the source of uh, guidance for a sincere student of Islam. Now, look at the following unreliable sources. All of them have got a secondary position. Number one, weak traditions, Ahadith Da'ifa clashing with the above three. Number two, fabricated ahadith, traditions clashing with the above three sources. Number three, sayings of elders, clashing with the above three. You know, sometimes you find in books, some of our, our elders said, so who are they? We don't know. And number four, dreams and uh, uh, intuitions of saints and Sufis clashing with the above three. Number five, Jewish narratives clashing with the above three. And number six, events of uh, Talmud and Torah clashing with the above three. This order cannot be reversed. The reliable things cannot be judged in the light of unreliable things. The doubtful knowledge is judged in the light of authentic knowledge. 
the concept of religion which is formed by wrong order will naturally be wrong. I repeat, the concept of religion which is formed by wrong order will naturally be wrong. And you might have seen certain people who re read this kind of books of Targhib and Tarheeb or Fada'ilul A'mal they, their concept of deen is very, very different and very, very wrong sometimes. Why? Because they are sincere, but they don't have the knowledge of Quran, they don't have the knowledge of Sahih Ahadith, and they do not have the knowledge of Hassan Ahadith. So they talk about dreams and sayings and fabricated Ahadith and weak traditions. Now, finally, the summary of uh, this chapter number 11 from the book. Number one, the traditions that does not fulfill the five conditions of a Sahih Hadith tradition, sound tradition, and four conditions of a Hassan Hadith is called a weak Hadith. Number two, there are many kinds of weak ahadis. A tradition becomes hanging, in interrupted, perplexing or broken because of perceptible interruption or by the interruption of the chain. A tradition becomes concealed or imperceptibly interrupted because of imperceptible interruption. A tradition becomes defective, denounced or renounced or fabricated because of defamation of narrator. A tradition becomes irregular or interpolated or transposed or additional or altered or shaky because of differences with the trustworthy narrators. Number three, we should not set hard standard to accept the weak. We should set hard standard to accept the weak traditions. Number four, the weak traditions should not be accepted in the presence of Sahih Ahadith. Number five, the, the Sahih Ahadith give us cert certain knowledge that it has indeed been said by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While the weak traditions do not give the certain knowledge. Number six, the Sahih traditions should only be used even for the purpose of describing the merits of deeds and for persuasion or intimidation. Means even in Fada'ilul Amal, uh, you have to quote Sahih and Hassan Ahadith and you should not, uh, you should not look into the weak ones. And uh, the weak traditions are evaluated and scrutinized in the light of Holy Quran and Sahih Ahadith. The Quran and the sound traditions are not evaluated and scrutinized in the light of weak traditions. So the, the priority should be very clear in, in mind. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.